He's yeah. a Leo man, so he's Appreciate naturally it. very, he wants to be the best. The child, he's real. <laughs> I've seen some of your older clips on YouTube and I'm like, whoa, like, I dude. used to be good. <laughs> Why did you start your YouTube channel? Money. <laughs> G'day guys, welcome to Skate Mates, where we talk about skating with our mates. I'm here with my mate, Dan Corrigan. How are you, sir? I'm good. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you today. G'day. <laughs> I wanted to start this skate mates thing to just like have convos with my mates about skating. Because often I feel like when you're talking with your friends, you get new insight and it kind of boosts you up a bit more. So I have a list of questions here to ask you. Not only is this your first time hearing what skate mates is, that was literally my, I didn't know what we were doing. Yeah, he didn't know what we were doing He was today. like, just sit down. <laughs> yeah, I was like, sit down. Yeah, he was like, go oh, sit in the grass over there. <laughs> How did you get into skateboarding and what was your introduction into skating? I mean, there's kind of two stories to it. There's two different points. I rode a skateboard, skateboard for the first time in my cousin's garage. Okay, uh, so it's family. Yeah, he had a Power Ranger skateboard in the garage and I just pushed around it on my knee, but I didn't like ride it, ride it. And then that just kind of, he didn't want it. So I kept it. And then like years later, I would just push around on it in my basement. There's like a little bit of concrete. Mm -hmm. and we had like, it, on the East Coast, just about everyone has a basement. So we had this tiny little concrete pad down there. My brother's friend took me across the street and showed me how to Ollie. Okay. And then I was like, oh, this is gonna be the rest of my life. Didn't know it then. <laughs> That, isn't it crazy? Like I had a similar, like my parents got my first board from a, it was basically a swap meet. Yeah. And it was an old Kmart one kick skateboard and I used to skate up and down the driveway. So yeah. just a little bit of concrete, but I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was like my BMX bike or some shit. Yeah, it was another fad. I mean, all the kids in the neighborhood like picked up skating and then when I got my first skateboard, they all got out of it. So they all got to the point where they could do shove and they could like ride off of curbs. Mm -hmm. And then they all quit and then they moved on to, I forget what they got into next. Oh, it was um, motor scooters. Like the little scooters, like gas powered scooters. Oh, I remember ride. those super old school, looks like a, yeah. uh, you guys call them weed whacker motors on the back yes. wheel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Everyone yeah. was driving those around illegally <laughs> in the city. And Baltimore. I just, yeah, I was just pushing around. What was your main source of motivation slash drive when you first started skating? And are those the same mo things that motivate you today? Once again, there's, there's different times where it switched. So initially it was a toy and I was like, oh, this is just super fun. I think it wasn't until I started, like I didn't even know you could be sponsored until I was offered my first sponsorship. Really? Yeah. So I thought that like pro skating wasn't a real thing. I thought that like Tony Hawk pro skater video game, there was Tony Hawk and then all the other characters were made up. And I, I've talked about this a couple of times because it's like their names are like Bucky Lassick and Bam Margera. When I first seen Bam Margera, I was this like, who's this band. French dude? Who's this French dude? <laughs> but what's really funny about that is someone else said the almost the exact same thing verbatim on the Nine Club. Really? Yeah, they were like, I also thought none of the pro skaters were real. It's just like an NPC, or not an NPC, but Jeff just like Raleigh, a... Jeff Rowley spelled with a G, like get out of here, dude. <laughs> Who was the other know? dude? It wasn't Jeff Rowley. How did you know? Because it's a fake name. <laughs> I ended up, I was skating a skate park and the skate park offered to sponsor me. And then that immediately took me in a different direction. So at that point in time, it was kind of like thrill seeking at that point. Mm -hmm. And I liked, I was already a little competitive with my friends, but okay. it wasn't like, I already knew that I liked skating with people who were better than me. It wasn't about okay. being the best. It was like, I always liked chasing the tail of whoever's in So best. how old were you when you realized that you wanted to skate around people that were better than you? Probably like 15, like my second year of skating. I was opposite. Whenever really? we'd go to the city and skate and there'd be better people, I would just tuck my tail between my legs and just like sit down. Oh, I would definitely stop and watch, but like I would watch them skate as if they were a skate video to hype me up to go okay. skate. I definitely want to have sessions with them. I would like, I was definitely the kid asking questions. I bugged Ronnie Jones how to 360 flip for like an entire day until he, he, was, he was like, I'll tell you later, I'll tell you later. And he was just trying to not. And then at the end of the day, he sat me down and like showed me how to tray flip. And That's like, like the OG way because like, oh, it would have been an hour era, but there used to be trick, trick tips in Slam Magazine in Australia and you could learn how to, this week we're going to show you how to kick flip. But back then it was like, you could only watch video parts and shit yeah. and like ask people, hey, how do you do it? And if yeah. you're lucky enough, they'd be like, I'll show you. We would frame by frame it in skate videos. Oh, you we would, would slow pause it down. It and just destroy our VHS tape. <laughs> pause. Like click, click, <laughs> click. And I forget what you had to balance, but you had to do something with like the, the up and down arrow button when you yeah. did it. So you didn't like burn it out so it wouldn't be so fuzzy. Dude, I had a wheel on the VHS so I could like slow it down oh, and go click, 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 click around. Yeah, so that's how, yeah. that's how I figured out a lot of flip tricks was frame by frame. Okay, what is your motivation for skateboarding today? Well, after, shortly after that I got sponsored, I got really competitive. Okay. And I wanted to be better than other people at skating. Right, so see, he, like, he's yeah. a Leo man, so he's Appreciate naturally it. very, he wants to be the best. Because the challenge is real. <laughs> and totally the planets have a total pull on <laughs> our personality. And science hasn't been able to detect how yet, but it's there. I, I, think, I think a part of it was the skate shop that I started riding for 
had a lot of people who didn't like it in the local area, and so right. they were kind of shitty to us when we go to like the local DIY and stuff. So that made me want to be you like, oh be yeah? yeah, watch me ollie this nine yeah. stair. You and were doubling down. It was, yeah, it was terrible. It was like super <laughs> toxic. I was really annoying to a lot of people. I read okay. the, like my, when I was younger, I read a lot of people the wrong way. Really? I, like, yeah, like I was definitely Dan Scorgan. You were moving and shaking, dude. It was super lame. And then it wasn't really until, I don't know, I tried to do something with skating and it didn't work out. But I was like, oh yeah, it's mm. still a toy. Calm down. Yeah. I mean, not that skating wasn't fun for me in that point in time when you're like, you can be competitive. Like I look at people who try to like win contests and stuff like that and people are like, that's not skateboarding. I'm like, they're still having a good time. It's just a different yeah, kind of good time. Yeah, it's a different kind of ball game yeah. really. I think it's, you know, it's silly to try to gatekeep how someone else you know, enjoys the same toy as you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's not a good mentality to have. It sounds like it was kind of a spiteful, like, I'm going to be it better than you. Was. I'm going to, like, shred on you. But it, but that bled into how I started doing it across the board. And I do yeah. think that that made me better at skating. Like, if you watch my older footage, it's like me skating handrails he, and coming down the I've seen some of your older clips on YouTube, and I'm like, whoa, like, I dude. used to be good. <laughs> <laughs> I, used to, I, I used to do stuff. Well, it's like, throughout everyone's skateboarding path, yeah. You know, career. There's different errors. And this leads me into the next question. Oh, yeah. You... My motivation now, though. It is literally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. My motivation now is I just want to learn as many tricks as I possibly can. The more board control I have, the more fun I have on a skateboard. And it's nice to go to a spot, and no matter what's put in front of you, you have multiple options to play with. It. Right. That's how I think of it. Just okay. more toys. Do you have a favorite error in skateboarding? And if so, why? Right now, because it's you have the most options. I think the mentality of skaters before, like when I was growing up was very clicky. And that is more on the East Coast and the West Coast, but like it was much more like, oh, you skate with those people. Well, like then you skate with those people. Yeah. And like, oh, you do those tricks, those tricks are lame. And now it's like very accepting. And I mean, not just in like girl skaters alone, like them coming into the skate park and they'd either have a big red X on their back where they'd get ignored or they'd get hit on. And yeah. Like, that's, There's no in-between. Exactly. And that's finally starting to fizzle out and it's starting to be like, oh no, this is a place for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then skating in general. I think that there's been more tricks and concepts explored in skateboarding that I can like steal from so many different directions. <laughs> or, I mean, some people, you could you could call it being influenced by different, but I'm literally yeah. like, oh, that trick looks cool. I'm taking that. Like, I, I want that trick. You know what they fun. say? They say steal like an artist. And that's what you're talking about, referencing things and then like recreating them. Steal like them. an artist. Yeah, that's a quote. It's like, don't copy, steal. It's Still like an artist. What made you want to move to California? I didn't do it on purpose. I've been pretty anti-California. A lot of people on the East Coast, I think we grew up with a bit of chip on our shoulder from the West Coast. Right. And I think a lot of times we'll come out here. The pace is so much slower out here. Like the East Coast, it's like the sweat of your brow. You got to really hustle to get anything mm -hmm. done. Just in general. And then in skateboarding, it's the same thing. Like no one's really watching you out there. Yeah. So you come out here and you try to go filming and everyone's like really taking their time. And you're like, man, I'm trying to like film a whole video part in this like one week and the guy who I'm staying with goes out like twice the whole time we're here and like gets up at noon yeah i think that yeah. leaves a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths who come here and visit because how much slower it is and then on top of that like people are way more name droppy out here so i just had kind of a bad taste in my mouth i came out here right. i tried to do the skating thing i wasn't good enough that didn't leave a bad taste in my mouth that actually made me kind of enjoy skating a little bit more it was like a did big, it take the pressure off it was weight off my shoulder okay. i was like i was like oh it's like i was like oh man i don't got it oh man i don't got it <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna go home and yeah fly. that makes sense dude. um but I came out here for vacation because I did ro I did blacktop like I worked in road work. Um, he was so a bloke. He was like a proper like construction bloke. And, and not even like no. I was. I, a, he was a foreman. So I used to work construction, and then we would get laid off in the winter. And so I came out here for a winter vacation. And then my boss called me and asked me to come back to work, and I was like literally on the beach. In, oh, like, you were like I'm sad. I literally said to him, I don't think I'm coming back. Yeah. And he was just like, all right, we'll pay you for another like week or two. And then like, if you ever want to come back, come back. Oh, I was like, okay. oh, sick. At least he wasn't like, what? You're not coming back? No, he was cool. So I had that security to like fall back on. So it was yeah. easy for me to stay. And then I like, I delivered pizza. First thing I did was I sold, I was a weed delivery He guy. was a weed guy. Yeah. And I don't, I'm like, I'm like sober. Like I don't do anything. <laughs> Uh, but I was delivering weed, and I didn't even know how sketchy it was. Like, I didn't know how legal it was. I was like, oh, California gets legal. I was driving around with, like, pounds of weed Dude, in Dude, he was, he was the man. He was a plug. No, I was not Dan the man. Dan was a plug. And the the people would always ask me, like, oh, like, what do you recommend? Like, and I would always just, be, I would just, like, basically read off a cue card because I need to smoke. <laughs> I'm like, oh, dude, the strawberry purple kush is gas. 
<laughs> like I'm old. Like I'm. Talk, I still think about like middies and stuff like yeah, that. You know? Yeah, I'm like old, old weed head. So yeah, I did that, and then I ended up doing pizza delivery, and then I got a job at Keen Ramps when I needed to like really do something. So I do yeah. Keen Ramps full time, mm -hmm. and then skate lessons on the weekend, and that's how I was scraping by. And then I switched over to doing YouTube. Yeah. Um, part time. Well, I was doing all that full time. So I was doing YouTube full time, skateboarding. Or I, mean, I remember you were like, you were doing a bunch when I first met you. You were like, bah, it was bah, seventy bah, bah, bah. hours a week. Jeez, I was doing like 70 dude. hours a he week was all grinding. over the place. But I only had to do it for a couple months until YouTube could carry more. And luckily, yeah. Corey Keen was like, you he, can work here less. Yeah, yeah, he hooked it up for yeah, you. Yeah, he let me go like this. Like, he let me gracefully yeah. switch Shouts over. Shouts out to Corey. I already know this, but I feel like it's so interesting for me. There's a thing about being an artist and turning your art into a job. Like, if you're an artist, you're like, oh, it's art, it's not work. Once it starts becoming a job, people start to lose the the kind of drive and the passion for it. But let me ask you this, why did you start your YouTube channel? Money. Because <laughs> I had watched Dale's channel for years and seen yeah. you on the channel. I remember there being a long going joke being like, yeah, wait till I start my channel, ha ha ha. Yeah, yeah. And then he, you did it. Yeah, I did. It, it was, well, I should probably be more specific. It's not just so I could make more money, it was so I could skateboard more. Yeah. That's the real answer. I wanted to make money skateboarding. He so wanted that financial more. freedom to be able to just skate and have yeah. control of your time yeah because i look at money as their ticket to free time yeah and I, I, what i want to do with all my free time is skate yeah yeah that's a good way to look at it here's another good one because my introduction to dan was skateboarding so like often you make a lot of good friends through skateboarding and it always amuses me to know what people's side like hobbies and passions are do you have any hobbies or side interests outside of skateboarding if so what are they and what draws you towards them oh man i'm asking all the, the tough questions here guys these are very tough questions that, that, that's not a tough question that's the easiest question <laughs> yeah i know but it's he's like... literally like underhand throwing me ever like he's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so i mean i think a lot of people know that chess is a big one like, he loves Zug, chess yeah zugs wang's like a part of my instagram name or whatever big yeah. on chess I guess what draws me to it was I used to play with my dad and um, he would just smoke me all the time. Mm. And then when I moved out here, I learned enough from him that I could beat all of my friends who didn't, haven't played at least a hundred games or so. I like, had enough understanding. Right. And so I was like, I was like, oh man, like it's not so fun to play people in person because it's kind of an easy win. And then I got online and was immediately just like you were pummeled. smoking everybody no i was getting destroyed oh really like not even close like it, it's chess isn't something i think a lot of people think like oh you're smart you're gonna be good at chess no you yeah. have to play so much to learn theory you're 100 you hours dude there's so much. a thousand hours so, sorry a million hours dude, i literally was i study theory like i watched yeah. like, tons of tutorials on like this specific this specific opening you need to do this this and this and if they do this you need to do this i feel like that's, that's like a, a long thinking game you have to it be is. thinking yeah. in and I feel like I, I suck at like thinking like that. But so what draws me to chess is I suck at it. I'm not really? actually, yeah. But like there's things I suck at. I tried to do sign writing for a bit, sucked at it, dropped it. I didn't want to do it. I, I like being bad at stuff though because the bar's so low, it's easy to meet goals. Okay. And I think a lot of times when I see someone who's naturally good at something, they don't end up getting that good because it comes too easy and it gets boring to them. I see that a lot True. in skateboarding. I feel like I can resonate with that because when I was 16, 17, I was probably at my peak, believe yeah. it or not, and I got bored of skating. Yeah. Because I just wasn't like, oh, too good. not too good, but I guess I was like good enough to be like, I can do some stuff, but yeah. I wasn't interested on knowing what was further. Yeah. I just wasn't around the right people, blah, 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 blah. Everybody's heard that story of, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I could, man, I could have been pro if I just, you know what I mean? Yeah, Uncle, everyone's got their Uncle, Uncle Rico. Uncle Rico, yeah, you know, Rico, exactly. Yeah. I would yeah. kick flip right over the moon. <laughs> Do you feel like skateboarding is more of a sport or an art form? It's like most things, it's whatever you treat it as. I think if you start skateboarding for the sole purpose of getting good enough to win money in contests, it is a sport. I mean, it's, a, it's an excuse for adults to go up to other adults and be like, hey, do you want to go play? then I think it's a toy. I think yeah. it's like, it's just like a really, really fun hobby or activity. And then there's some people who look at skateboarding where they're like, oh, I want to add something unique to it or special to it. And I think some people, as much as I don't like calling skateboarding an art, you can treat it like an art. You can look at your video part as this project that you're trying to create this full image of, especially concept video parts. Yeah, it's so like your body of work. Yeah, it's whatever, it's whatever you want it to be. And I don't think there's a wrong way to do it. Here's a random, this is like a wild card question since we're kind of on the topic. I reckon that skateboarding is easier today than it was 20 years ago. Easier to learn? Yeah. Well, I think it's because monkey see, monkey do. I think Mark Johnson did a pretty good job talking about this in, um, I think it's the credit credits of Modus Operandi or I'll have you see that video where he's like, he's talking about like you go to the skate park and when he was a kid, it used to be kind of like people were doing 50-50s and 5-0s and that's what you would see. Yeah. Now, 
you go to skate parking, people are doing nollie crooks, kickflip back tails, back tail kickflips. Kids see that as the norm. Well, this this video came out in like 2000 fucking three, two. Right. Now kids go to the skate park and they're seeing people sit on super long front crooks, yeah. long back tails. That looks normal because that's what everyone's doing. Yeah, yeah. And so that's immediately where their mind goes like, oh, this is possible so I can just lean into my tricks and fully commit. The hardest part about skateboarding and we all experience this is the first time you really try it and put your chest into your trick, like mm -hmm. you're, I'm fully committing to it. Standing tall on your trick. You're probably going to do it. And seeing other people do it casually makes it easier to get to that mindset so you learn faster. It took me over a year to learn kickflip. Kids today learn kickflips in a day or too. It took me a long time to kickflip kick as well. But then so I learned the kickflip, but then I was like, okay, cool, you can kickflip, but it looks like shit and it's mobbed and your feet are all weird. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was like 13 and I skated with some other people and were like, no, no, put your foot here and do this. Then my kickflip started to kind of fine tune themselves. Or not yeah. themselves, but I started to fine tune my kickflips to being like kind of what they are today. I fixed my kickflips at 30 years old. Really? I had the worst, if you look at my old video parts, I had the mob as kickflips and they were rarely in my See, parts. My kickflips were pretty sick when I was a kid, but they shifted. So I had to be really like, like mindful kickflips. of like keeping my shoulders parallel with the board and like flicking out and like not turning my body. This question is like- I'm not a necrophilia, a hot... but I am a good friend. <laughs> I'll do whatever you ask. This question is kind of a hot topic right now. What holds more value in skateboarding, style or skill? Well, yeah, it's, once again, I think it's just a matter of opinion. If you're asking me my personal opinion. What do you prefer to see? Like, would you prefer to see someone do some like really chill tricks, but they look really stylish and there's just a vibe about them when they're skating? Or would you want to see some dude in skivvies and with tall, so I sound like a hater right now, but I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, that, that's it's there is like a certain look on a skateboard that looks better. Yeah, I, I'll say this once again, it's gonna be like a long winded answer. Okay, Sorry. let's let's run it. I think through the mid 2000s and early 2000s, skaters of this generation have a really good idea of what good style is supposed to look like. Yes. There's a lot of influence on it. So people have been arguably fake steezing the cool styles of the past yeah, to where right. they got so good at it, you can't tell the difference. So when I watch the new cool videos that come out, mm -hmm. in the same way that when I saw the primitive video, I was like, oh, it's like the same skater over and over again. Yeah. Like really, really good skaters. I mean, and some of them have good style, but you, you understand what I'm saying. I watch a lot of the new trendy videos and I'm like, oh, it's the same skater, just different stances doing the yeah. cool tricks. And I think I'd much- He's the cool guy. Yeah, I'd much rather see someone not follow a template of what good style is okay. and be less good than yeah. someone who is following the template of what a cool style is now and is also good. An example of someone who I would like to watch, I would say like Miles Willard, where he's not holding his stances, he's not specifically dressing the way that all the really cool people are, are dressing. Yeah, he, he has his own thing. thing. Yeah. It's, it's very obvious that he has had influence from other skaters, but he's, it's not like he's not leaning into it super hard. Yeah. I see a lot of people- Shouts out to Miles. They bend their knee a certain way when they land a trick or they like, you know, they, they have like that exact, they all have that uniform right now. <laughs> it's just like, and I, you know, we had our uniform, we had the Chris Cole uniform. I, we had our, uh, our what well, was that pants company that we were all wearing? Volcom. No. Volcom skinny jeans. No, it was the other one that we, Altamont. We were, we were, uh, all, wearing, we were yeah. all wearing Altamont and we the were- The shoelace belt. And the 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 t-shirt the that came to here. Baseball tees. Baseball tees. You know, we had our uniform, and there's a new uniform. Yeah. And we had our style that we we went after, and they had their style. I used to wear yeah. girls' skinny jeans because they were twelve dollars at the mall. Oh yeah, I wore my mom's bell bottoms. <laughs> uh, I, well, really? you know, I, I see people like Eight Baller or or uh, Pedro Delfino who like clearly doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Like he's just going for the coolest tricks, and I think it looks so raw and exciting. And I think yeah. I'd rather see a unique style. That's fair. Than quote unquote good style. The short answer to that is style versus skill. Style over. <laughs> I'm not trying to dab you up, but I will. I think style over skill, but not mainstream. Style. Yeah, but see, there's like skateboarding, and then there's like skateboarders, and then there's sub genres of skateboarders. Like people love yeah. commenting on my Instagram and stuff. You're trying to be like Sean Pablo, blah blah blah. Because I'm just I'm lanky as well. They think you're trying to be like Sean Pablo. Yeah, people will comment to the door. You're trying to be like Sean Pablo so hard, and it's like, dude, I'm skinny and lanky too. Like, I don't see that. why my why you know I don't see it either. But people like to like class me in that genre of skateboarder. Oh, you're trying to be like him. You're you don't trying, even you know? do you don't have you don't have the same 
trick selection. Nothing. You know, the, you Nothing. Know, the stance before. Like, Sean Pablo has a lot of very specific things that yeah. are very specifically him. I think it's the arms down thing. Because to me, when I'm rolling into a trick, I want all my weight to be centered. So I'll kind of drop my arms and concentrate. But you're not as exaggerated yeah. as him. I think it's literally you're, like, tall, attractive, and have slightly darker skin. <laughs> I think it's low-key. Tick, tick, tick. Yeah, I think that's it. Any advice for new people coming into skateboarding? Like, someone's brand new to skateboarding. They don't know the difference between you and Bob Burnquist. Like, what is the advice you want to give them? Like, they're, they, they're intrigued, they want to get into it. What should they do? That's a good example. There's not very, there's, we're pretty much the same person. Here, <laughs> I would focus on the relationship between you and your skateboard and nothing else. Right. So the culture of skateboarding is cool. What other people think and advice that they give on like what tricks or whatever, that's mm -hmm. cool too. But make sure that it's only about you and the skateboard. Uh, and then I think you will not lose your lust for it. I think a yes. lot of the other things kind of get wedged between you and you can get burnt out on sort of skating for other people. It's sort of like the classical thing that happens when people go to art school and yeah. then they end up not wanting a career in art. That's what I was saying about yeah. becoming like... Because they unlearn your yeah. own style and like, no, no, this, this, and this. And fun fact, I have quite a few friends that have like legitimate careers in art that like make good money off of it and yeah. none of them went to art school. Art school is a sham. No offense to anyone in art sham, school, but... But it's definitely... It takes a certain type of mentality to get through it and, and yeah. keep enough of yourself to want to keep doing it. I mean, I can't really talk. I never went to art school. I was self-taught with yeah. art and stuff, but I guess, yeah. I had an ex and her parents used to pay 10 grand a year for her to go to art school, but that's like, that man. 10 grand a year is not bad, though. Really? Yeah. I mean, in Australia, education is somewhat free, so it was kind of a trip to me that, yeah. but, you know, they were they were from North Sydney, so they were rich. Oh, not North Sydney. Yeah, on the other side of the bridge. Thank you for taking the time today to talk with me about skateboarding, and thank you for being my mate. We're check best out, friends, dude. Check out his YouTube channel. You already know, if you've clicked on this best video, friends. it's because you've seen his name and him in the thumbnail, and uh, you're intrigued to see what this is all about. But this is Skate Mates where we talk about skateboarding with our mates. Thank you, you very next? much. I want to do like Dale, dude. I Dale really want to do one. Dale. Dale's, oh man, you got to get a busy excited man, for though. Dale. Because Dale's, he, Dale's, he is, he is in the cocoon and he is about to emerge as a beautiful Just, butterfly. <laughs> He is, wait a, when you talk to him. He's evolving, dude. Idea. I've noticed yeah. from what he posts online, he's evolving, but I miss, yeah. if you watch this, Dale, I miss you. We'll do the, we'll do your skate mates very soon. Yeah, he has a lot to say. Dale's episode is going to be way better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>